Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we have something pretty cool, and that is the ASUS ZenBook. So the ZenBook is what is called an Ultrabook. So these use a special class of processors from Intel, which are still Core i5 and Core i7 processors, but, so you're gonna get the performance, but they have ultra low power designs, which means that they are able to fit in form factors that were until now, previously not possible for a PC. Now there are a couple different ZenBooks. We have the 13.3 inch LED backlit model here today, but I just wanted to go on the ASUS website and spend a little bit of time talking about, well, all about Zen. So what was involved in the design process of this remarkable, I want to call it a notebook, but they're calling it Ultrabook, so I'm going to go ahead and call it an Ultrabook. What makes it Ultra? So. ASUS says their designers were inspired by high-end watches. Uh, what they say is uh, they wanted the same thin and light profile of a super high quality watch when developing the same the ZenBook. They're also going for a seamless and smooth look, which it is definitely seamless and most assuredly smooth. You can't find a rough edge anywhere on the unit itself. With an embedded keyboard, which they have, and an oversized integrated touchpad, which they definitely also have. The touchpad is huge, much like its competitor, the MacBook Air, which is really the only thing I would consider a true competitor for the ZenBook at this time. And then they've also mentioned that Angular Harmony was another highlight of the design process. They wanted a sharp culminating point on one end and a rounded smooth curve on the other. So if I go ahead and close the notebook, you can see that on the one side, we do have more of a sharp point. And then on the other side, it is more of a rounded, curved experience. So if you take the whole thing and put it like this, it's kind of like an elongated teardrop sort of shape. Now, one of the other things that ASUS mentions on their microsite is that they had to develop completely new manufacturing processes, not to mention the team of engineers that worked on it. So the costs were obviously very high to bring something like a ZenBook to market in order to achieve putting a PC inside this particular form factor. Now, ASUS has, at this time, the thinnest and actually the lightest, although I can't say thinnest because it's pretty much tied, but they have the lightest Ultrabook 13.3 inch style form factor device on the market. That includes competing against the MacBook Air. It is lighter than the MacBook Air. Now they also talk a lot about the incredible beauty and we can definitely talk beauty for a while. In fact, why don't we talk beauty for a little while? I want you guys to have a look at the gorgeous finish on the front or the top of the uh, ZenBook, which is kind of a circular brushed metal finish. Looks just great with a simple ASUS logo in the middle of it. On the bottom of the unit, look at this. ASUS has actually gone to the effort to do a brushed metal finish on the bottom of the unit with um, exhaust at the back as well. So you do have that functionality in there. And we don't typically see this on the PC where as much attention gets paid to the bottom as gets paid to the usable surfaces of the notebook. And uh, so here you can see once we open it up, we've got more ventilation here. I'm going to have to change the angle so you can see that. More ventilation here up at the top. We've also got nice recessed keyboard with chiclet keys, very good layout. And then we've got that same brushed finish around the oversized touchpad that is also here. Here's the 13.3 inch LED backlit screen with the webcam here as well as the stereo microphone. So they've even gone to the detail with little things like the Windows 7 and Intel Core i7 stickers that have to be included for um, branding reasons on any Windows Intel notebook. Well, they've gone and created grayscale ones so that they won't disrupt the overall look of the ZenBook itself. So we've had a look at the beautiful aspects of the ZenBook physically. Let's have a look at the practical aspects. So I want to do the uh, overall design. So here, let's have a look at it from the side. I want to show you guys the overall thickness. I know some of you don't like the iPhone thickness comparison, but it does give anyone who knows how thick an iPhone is a really good feel for how thick the object in question is. It's just for scale. All right. Uh, in terms of how far back the hinge goes, I'm just going to show you guys. It actually opens up fairly wide, so you can go ahead and you can use it even by holding it. I mean, the thing is so light, you can easily hold it and use it with one hand. 
All right, in terms of I.O. on this side, you're not going to have a ton of options because it's so thin that you can only squeeze so much on there. So you've got your DC power in, you've got USB 3, which is outstanding to see that on this model because that's your high speed I.O. You've got VGA and also micro HDMI. It comes with the VGA adapter, which is really nice. You move around, it's so thin here, you couldn't possibly expect to squeeze any kind of port on there. And on the other side, you find USB 2, a headphone jack, and an SD card reader. So yeah, that's pretty much all you get in terms of expansion, but there's not a lot you can do about it. Now, I also want to show, just for the sake of comparison, in terms of thickness, the ZenBook with the MacBook Air. So I want these guys right next to each other so you guys can get a really good feel for the form factors of these devices. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this around right here. Hopefully this is giving you guys a good sort of feel for it. Very, very similar form factors. Basically, the ZenBook would be the PC response to something like a MacBook Air. Last thing I'm gonna do is I just wanna show you guys the hinge comparison. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take the MacBook Air and open it up. And we're going to take the Asus ZenBook and open it up so you guys can see the angles that can be achieved by either of these devices. And I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to say about it physically. Now, I don't usually talk about pricing on this particular show, but today I'm going to a little bit, and there's a very good reason for it. Now, the MacBook Air that we have here is with a Core i5 processor, four gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, and otherwise very, very similar in terms of the functionality to the ZenBook, right? I mean, that's fairly obvious for most of you to see. Now, with the ZenBook, it's $150 cheaper with the same sized SSD, same overall specs, and it has an Intel Core i7 processor, which is 100 megahertz faster compared to the MacBook Air. So you're saving $150 and you're getting a faster CPU. You also get a two year global warranty versus a one year warranty on the MacBook Air, and you get one year of accidental damage protection with every single ZenBook that is out of the box as long as you register it with ASUS. If you want an Apple Care warranty, you do have to pay extra for it. So there's a lot of value on the PC side to be had. You also have a full one year warranty on the battery pack and you get some included accessories. So inside this little baggie which comes in the package we have the um, small VGA to full size VGA adapter. If you're going to carry your ZenBook around with you, give presentations in unfamiliar areas, you're going to need that. We've also got a USB to Ethernet adapter. So yes, your ZenBook can plug into a wired connection out of the box. You have a cable tie. Okay, that was a little bit unnecessary. For your power adapter, which is your non-standard sort of power adapter fits into a little brick, very elegant looking, and then you've got your power connector on the other end. And then finally, it also comes with a carrying case. So these are all things other than the power adapter. So the power, actually here, I'll show you the form factors of the power adapters. So very, very similar. I mean, these are devices that are using a very similar amount of power, so you can expect a similar size power brick. And these are all things other than the power adapter that are not included with something like a MacBook Air. Actually, oh, no, no, before I put it inside, I just wanna show you guys the inside is a very, very soft kind of, um, what does it feel like? Kind of like a velvet or something, or like a suede or whatever. It's fabric, it's soft. And then on the outside, we have a finish that reminds me of the Transformer tablet more than anything else. The back of the Transformer tablet has kind of a roughness to it, very easy to grip, so you can carry around and protect your ZenBook without any expensive accessories. Now one of my favorite PC versus Mac anecdotes, watch this, I'm gonna close it, it's gonna go into standby, and then I'm gonna open it up, it's gonna go into instant on mode pretty much, It'll take a second, is one of my uncle's friends telling me about what made his MacBook Air so great, and it was that, oh wow, you know, I never have to shut it down, I can just, I can just close it when I don't need it, and then it sits there, and then I can open it up when I need it again, wow, it's on again so quickly, don't have to boot up like a PC. So I showed him my notebook, which is like this big honking gaming notebook, and I showed him, well, this is how long it takes me to turn on my PC from standby, 
done. And he's like, oh, wow, how'd you do that with a PC? And I said, well, it has an SSD. So the ZenBook and the MacBook Air, so they're very similar in this respect, both have SSDs, which means combined with ASUS's Super Hybrid Engine 2, which allows it to stay in standby for up to two weeks at a time. This one's down to nine days, 11 hours. It comes with a little counter on the desktop that tells you. So the SSD combined with that technology allows you to, like the MacBook Air, pretty much never have to shut it down because you can just close it when you don't need it anymore and you can open it up and it is pretty much right there you go instant on and back to the desktop no big deal one other thing I forgot to add about the whole instant on and never shutting down functionality is that if you enable instant on which is also done via a little uh, application in the top left uh, top right the ZenBook will actually automatically back up anything in the memory to the SSD if the battery should drop below 5%, which means that even if you leave it on, you leave it in standby for two and a half weeks, maybe you go on vacation, you come back, you will not have lost any data because it will automatically back itself up before it runs out of power. So just a couple more things to cover about the ZenBook before we wrap this up. Um, Asus's slide about this is hilarious because they show the Asus ZenBook, the top seller with Windows 7, and then competitor, and then they show the battery life. So I think we can all tell what that top seller with Windows 7 is, which is the top seller in this particular category, which is pretty much the only product that has existed in this particular category up till now. So if I haven't, you know, pretty much said it outright, forgive me, but there you go. So they're claiming up to 25% longer battery life than that battery life than that top top seller competitor. So here it talks about performance, which performance is pretty much no big deal for something like this because you throw an SSD in there, you throw a Core i7 processor and four gigs of RAM and you've got very good performance in a Windows 7 environment. That's not really rocket science. Um, and the other thing is that ASUS includes USB 3, whereas the MacBook Air does not have USB 3. It does have Thunderbolt, so at this time Thunderbolt's not that useful, but in the future it may come in handy. But if you want something now, if you want to use your USB 3 thumb drive and you're going to have better transfer speeds, yeah, USB 3 is going to come in handy. They have also implemented the latest standards in terms of their serial ATA. So it uses a SATA 3 6 gigabit per second interface rather than a SATA 2 3 gigabit per second interface in order to achieve better storage performance, which for a form factor like this is pretty much what it's gonna come down to because you're not gonna be able to alter your CPU performance very much. You're not gonna get much by throwing a bunch more RAM in it or anything like that. So it comes down to putting a high performance storage uh, system in here so that you can get the best possible performance. Here is the overall specs if you guys just want to check it out. So the ZenBook that we have here is the Core i7-2677. It's got 4 gigs of RAM. It is the 13.3 inch. And another advantage it has over the MacBook Air is the higher resolution screen. So it does have a 1600 by 900 screen which is going to allow you to do more work in less space due to the higher pixel density. I'm a huge advocate of higher pixel density screens such as, and I'm gonna give Apple a plug here too, such as the Retina display. It makes an enormous difference to the usability of a device and kudos to Asus for doing a 13 inch notebook with such a high resolution screen. So thank you very much guys for checking out my coverage of the Asus ZenBook on NCIX Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos about the latest technology and whatnots, all that good stuff provided by NCIX.com.